DMV. Amy says, moo. And who raised these clowns? All this and more in today's Brilliant Observations. Do, 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 do. This week that I owe you the grand thank you. Oh, stars. Stars and we, stripes. Uh, we're trying in our house to get people out of our house. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so in an attempt uh-huh. to do all of those things, I get a text from Amy that says, uh, aren't we recording right now? And then I dropped a tiny turd in my pants and ran No, no, to the no. Computer. We changed our time. We changed our time because my day was all chopped up and your days are always chopped up and it, you're accommodating me anyway. So it's a whole big nothing burger. Who cares? Is We're good. We're here. We're, he- we're here. We're happy. We're here. We're queer. Get used to it. It's Pride Month. Go Pride. And get used be, to it, right? Be Pride. Yeah. Okay. We're, we're humid. It's, we're fluid. Good. It's the whole thing. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So you just came back from another weekend of traveling for lax doing uh not that far from where you're going to be next weekend which has the to be infuriating wind tour yeah this is i was telling some family members this next 18 months is going to be the busiest season we've ever had of our lives we're down to one traveling lacrosse player time was we had three we're down to one so you would think it would be lighter but he is really interested in pursuing this at a college level and to spare everybody all the rest of it. This next 18 month period is the time when all those decisions are going to be made. He's a rising sophomore, so he'll be a sophomore in the fall. So the summer season, the fall season, the resulting spring season, and then finally summer into fall of next year, it's all over but the shouting. So this is take as, you know, go to as many things as you can go to that are advised to go to blah, blah. It's a lot. And the good news for me is then it's done. Then it's done. I'm so, going to devote an entire gasp. episode to all of the beautiful phrases you have. Everything's done but the shouting. Don't it's hide all your over candle but the under the bushel. Don't like you You've have not, Wait a minute. You I am not to be credited with it's all over but the shouting. Oh, I don't That's say common. that they're yours. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh. I don't say that they're common either. I, I just have very different life mottos like I don't know it's to me it's what makes your verbiage so colorful and so beautiful and enjoyable to listen to dear listener am I right some of them I've picked up since being down here and I'm shocked to tell you how long we've been down here so I'm not going to say it because it bums me out but here's one of my favorites we'll shit fire and save matches had you not heard that one? I have never heard that one. Yeah, you sort of do a you do a the opposite of a preamble. You do a postamble ramble whenever you swear to try and soften it. So when you say "well shit," which is what you would normally say, right? You end up with "well shit fire and save matches." So it just keeps you keep building on it. So yes, and then there's another personal favorite: if a frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass a hopping. Oh my god. That is actually what, no, first of all, (laughs) take it as a no, I fucking haven't to any of the shit you and Dr. Phil spout on the regular. That is a, that is a euphemism for don't come at me with a hypothetical. So my favorite part of my (laughs) old job, which was working with deaf teens was telling them what, um, all of the euphemisms were all of the just quick wait or longer ways to say a concept that there really might not be a sign for they have them in sign language too but when you say that's the nail in the coffin Mm -hmm. I have a 13 year old deaf boy who looks at me and says what who died okay I'd wish you'd stop being so literal so there's this little remember the old band-aid containers the metal ones I had a teacher with whom I worked who collected those and put all of her concepts in in those and I fucking was there for it I loved it so I would pull it out and and I would say uh nobody's dead and then I'd have to explain it you just treated me like a 13 year old deaf boy and you explained to me nobody is dead but I did drive both of my children to Father's Day dinner last night oh how did you escape that with no one being dead because I imagine there were a lot of killing fields going on after that car ride 
Well, no, it was actually spectacular, but there was like you just said, three birds in the road. <laughs> and I thought, you fuckers can fly. You have no business. That squirrel I slow down for. A bird? I might draw a line there. Why are you in the middle of the road? There's nothing dead for you to eat. There, you're just having a party. So your phrase of bump, bump, what was it? Bumping. If if a frog Brogue. had wings, he wouldn't bump his ass a hopping. And it's either don't come at me with all your if, 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 I don't need it. And right. or you're giving me a bunch of bullshit excuses. So I'm tired of hearing about it. Because guess what? If a frog had wings, then something else would be the case. It's like I don't need to hear all the things that aren't the way they are. If a frog had wings, it wouldn't bump his ass a hopping. Get on it. I it's guess- basically like shut up and fucking do it. Sort of. And I can appreciate that. But the effort that goes into dreaming up, remembering and coming up with, (laughs) it could easily be sideswiped by just saying, fuck off. Like I'm in the Brett Goldstein camp of Roy Kent with the fucking hell. We have them. We have them up north, too. What was the what was the one that you would always say that means like 9000 things? I'll think of them. It's just been a while. Um I don't know. I'm I'm just saying it's beautifully colorful and just so much fun to get the interpretation book of Amy and her speech. And I'm here for it. I love it. And sometimes I might look a little confused on the (laughs) other side of of this little Zoom meeting. And it's your responsibility to clean it up for me because I'm the dumb one here. You're living in the midst (laughs) of. Oh, of Lord. all of the colorful joy, and I'm just, just drag me along with you, please. Not for nothing. That's the one I was going to say. That's an up north. That's not an up north nothing. of the frog. Yeah, not for nothing, which is which is basically like, I don't mean to bust your balls, but, you However. Know, not, not for nothing. I already did, but, you know, not for nothing. You kind of do stink, right? That's the way yes. it is. And I guess that's just part of the everyday, but the ones that I get about animals and flight and and fire and hiding things or just (laughs) obfuscating all I don't know it's fun for me to spend the first 30 seconds saying what 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 does that mean hey Amy what the fuck are you talking about no one ever knows well the good news about me is you're 80% likely that I've just invented it and it doesn't actually exist because it's a string of nonsense words that I've conjured but you get it. You oh, get honey, it. our listeners but you get know it. that. But you get it. You get it. You I get do, it. and I love it. And again, I'm here for it. <laughs> a week ago, I gave blood. I dragged my husband. Us? Yeah, okay. I dragged my husband. It really does take one week for me to stand up and not feel a little dizzy sometimes. Re- like Reconstitute if I, yourself. Yeah, yeah. It takes two months before you are back to normal and can do it again. But it takes really? a solid okay. week. For me to uh, get back to. So here I am a week out and I'm remembering a conversation I had with my phlebotomist. Of course you do. She said, you know, well, first of all, you know that there are like 40 questions you need to answer on the app or on the paper before you go. Well, the phlebotomist told me there's a new question that is coming to a theater near you, coming to a Mm -hmm. blood drive near you. And the new question is. In the last three months, okay. have you had multiple partners? That's that's cleaner. That's so much cleaner. Mm-hmm, wait. Because I don't understand. Okay, go ahead. Oh, there's more? There's a part B? There's if yes. Uh-oh. All right, yeah. They are batting around the terminology for question two, which is an anal question. Oh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So they're trying to say, was this back doorsy goats? That's what they want to know, but their way into it, get it, get it, get it, the way into the back door is um, asking you if in the last few months you've had multiple parts. They want to know if you've had a threesome. They're not asking if you're promiscuous. I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I think they want to know how many anals you've had. Well, that's why Instead of just saying how many various insertions anistically have you done in the past 90, right? It's... P anal 90, right? The P, P, <laughs> that is my favorite P90, exercise routine. P 90 X, literally, right? P90 three X, three X <laughs> anal 90. That's what it is. So instead of just saying this, the best video. I think it's out. I think it's in due deference to the gays because the other it's one, not to the gays, to the boys. Well, I guess it's not boys. It's whatever. It's in due deference to the anus, frankly, because you also, if you're in a committed anal relationship 
and you just had the one thing going in there, then they don't care blood giving wise. I don't know why you're covering your mouth. Because if you're in an excellent anal relationship. Committed. Committed. Oh, committed anal committed relationship. Committed anal relationship. My committed anus is anal. committed, but it is if not committed If you stood up in input. front of God and everybody and held <laughs> hands and you both wore white suits and I said, I do. Now it's anal city for the rest of your time. Then you don't really have to answer this question on your blood drive. Are they really giving blood? What's the, what's the over under? What's the intersectionality of these groups? Of who's giving blood? Well, I said to her, she said, I see you're here a lot. I've been at the beach twice already, and it's the same people, right? So I know these girls. And yeah, two in a row. Yeah, so she explained to me the Red Cross has come out with a curiosity about the gay community. You're absolutely right. It's 100% about the gay community because if you've had multiple partners. Sure. Sure. Who gives a shit? They give a shit because they want to know if if you're safe. Like they. I think the converse is true. If you are monogamous, they who don't gives give a, a shit. shit where you're sticking it? It's it's if you are non-monogamous, then we're, we want to know how many, how much. I say who. I say how often. Okay. Well, then you, maybe you want to write that down. Here's a bulleted list. That's all. And it really has to do with there's some blood born. Ba -ba 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 -ba. This doesn't, you know, it, it's just about the blood, guys. That's all. You can have all the anal sex you want. Just maybe don't give blood. That's all. Or try to. Be open to it is what we're saying. That's what we're saying. Yeah, I'm a big fan of, of the donation. Again, I've told you a thousand times it's the one good thing that I do, and I'm not letting it go until they make me. And Aww. that's going to be for other reasons. Next week, after all that anal, they're going to. Well, did, did, yeah. So you got disqualified. So you were disqualified is yeah, what I'm hearing of you all, say? All of my ass play. Yeah. All of my ass play <laughs> rules me out. Ass play? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Did they not know that phrase in the South? They should ass just play? have a second. Oh, they know it. They should just have a second. They should just have a second trailer with a different line. And then it's, you know, it's straight up blood donations. And then they have the ass play line. Or, play park. or a singles blood drive and a committed right. blood what drive. What about all the dirty birdies? Can't we just share mixed blood? Can't we share the dirty blood? I said to her as she's telling me these questions, I said, hey, don't you guys <laughs> test this shit so well before right. you use it? And she said, yeah, with the best test. And I'm like, there's a bad test? Wait a minute. I don't minute. want the bad test. I don't, who uses the bad test? And do they know that they're using the bad <sighs> that, test? That does suggest the existence of a substandard triple anal blood drive trailer with bad testing this must exist somewhere and in this timeline i think it's ready to go anyway i haven't given blood ever i can't remember ever really giving blood i if i did it was so long ago and maybe it didn't count like i really honestly don't remember ever giving blood i'm sure i did maybe but like he also wouldn't surprise me if somebody said you haven't i'd go okay i don't know None of my family has ever given blood. Really? My kid? No, not willingly. My kids haven't given any blood. So I think it starts early. For, well, I learned by my father. He went to the Knights of Pythias on Long Island every whatever. And it was a moment. It was like a, a thing of pride for him. And I didn't understand it. I, I thought it was crazy. Because who's what you you tap yeah, who's me. Pythias? Like, what, what? I don't even get it. Right. Oh, it's the Knights. You didn't, your dad didn't, well, he was military. He belonged to his own club. Well, we're Catholic, so we have the Knights of Columbus. I don't know the Knights of Pythias. Columbus. Well, we're Jewish. I don't know the fuck that is, but I knew every year at Christmas, I got gifts for sitting on some strange alcohol smelling man's lap. And Feeling like we're back to anal play. <laughs> I don't know that what you were doing. All right, keep it going. Uh, in a wood paneled room. Hall, hey, hey. if you will. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and there was candy. And my mother said, "Can you just take the children?" And you're, she you're, never you're, came. You're loading it up. That whole sentence could really be <laughs> on a different, entirely different podcast. Maybe with higher ratings because it's perverted. It's super gross. And I know you don't want to talk about shiny happy people, so I won't. But I'm just saying that you loaded up quite. A I haven't there. gotten there yet, but I understand that is. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, it's on my list and it's going to happen at the beach and we're going to look at each other like this world is being taken over by the crazy only religious. Reason, the only reason it's of interest to me, even without you having seen it, is I used to watch Shiny Happy People is a documentary. It's maybe three parts, maybe four on Netflix about primarily the Duggar family, which was showcased on TLC with a show 
uh, 19 nine million kids, children nine, and counting. Ten, nine kids and counting or 10 kids and counting. And they got up to like 23 kids. They kept going every year, getting their season renewed. And as they changed and morphed, what you will learn in shiny, happy people is they were representing consciously, thoughtfully planned on their part as a family, representing their faith and doing everything they could to proselytize their faith through this show secretly. Like it was, it was well known to their community that they were now the poster child for their faith, even though it was not really part of the show or in the intent of the show. And as you unravel, there's lots of dirty secrets, there's incest, there's terrible abuse. It was not great anywhere, anytime. The reason it's of interest, because who wants to know that sickening story, is I actually know two of the producers and, and met with her this past year about doing a show of my own. So she was on that show for a long time and was when it got shut down, that's when they, so I have the insider perspective of, no, we really didn't know what was on. And, but of course she went on to produce and still produce the sister wives and all that other shit. So it's not like they went on to, you know, totally sanitized, beautiful, light and snappy fair in any event. I was just curious to hear what that's all about, but we'll, we'll come back to that or perhaps we never will over to you, Melissa. No, while we're on that, what are you watching? Um, I would like to tell you that I'm almost finished with somebody somewhere. Yes, that did look good. That's the that's the comedian. What's Bridget her name? Everett? Yeah, Bridget who, Everett, who sort of lays on the sofa all the time and has a hard time getting off the sofa. Her. She. T- I first became aware of Bridget Everett when Amy Schumer said, "I'm going on tour and I need the fucking filthiest female comedian." Beautiful. That I know, who's so much fun. So she brought this woman with her, and I had a very conservative Indian neighbor. <gasps> uh huh, uh huh. And Stuart and I got tickets to see Amy Schumer because she's Amy Why Schumer not? and we love her. So we're on our way there, and we kind of are in this small town at a small theater, and we think, hey, I think I know that guy as we're picking up dinner before going in. Oh, that's our very conservative, quiet Indian neighbor. And conservative, I don't mean red, right. I mean, oh, oh no, we Reserved. don't talk yeah. about things like that. Yeah, the 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 prior ten minutes of anal play, yes. maybe would not. Oh be. my God, no! And <laughs> and if he even knew, this is one step further that I podcast a and b anal play was involved in any. He couldn't anal even make anal play. Oh, I love anal that you need a jingle play. for it. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't even make eye contact with me if that were the case, right? He just could not. Poor so thing. this Bridget Everett gets off the stage, comes into the audience. Her breasts are twice the size of yours. And mm. she put his head right between them both. I'm sorry. Oh. She was wearing a maxi dress, a strapless. She put his head under the dress and it popped up out of the front. And she put his head between her boobs and she gave him a shimmy. And I... He came out with like the horseshoe of hair he had around his head sticking straight up in the air because he had been through it and he was smiling and laughing. And I thought, honey, I I don't I don't think that's our neighbor. And she said, what's your name, buddy? Not anymore. (laughs) What's your name, buddy? And he's like, Stan or whatever. his Zabat or whatever. Yeah. And and she goes, well, Stan, you just got lucky tonight. And I. We were breathless. We just could not believe what we just saw. Yes. So, you oh know, my God. as we're That's leaving the, the theater, ticket. we saw him and we tried not to make eye contact. Look, anywhere else was the theory we had. He's but a changed Stan. So she's out there and she's embarrassing her. She's not embarrassed by anything. I'm lying. She's a D sharp. Let me put it that way. She's one of yeah. us. Yeah, right. I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. Yep she's she qualifies I get bummed out I never want to watch her because she's very tall as a as a woman which is neither here nor there but that's the only characteristic that is not easily identified as me in every other way we could be dead ringers for ourselves for each other and so a big loud mouthy overweight slovenly neighborhoody looking woman who's really really funny everybody's like oh god you love her she reminds me so much of you I'm like great so I just don't want to I don't know why you're shrinking yeah it's just I, I don't fact. I've never thought of you when I saw her I think of I've Amy heard Schumer. several people have really? told me that yeah well she yeah. is hilarious so she's that so I can and see flowy and loose she's and- She's been and flowy unadorned, loose. like no makeup, like the whole thing looking. Anyway, doesn't matter. Yeah, she plays in this 
it, these are all broken people, right? These are all people who have been through it. And it was a really good come down from the lasso, the shrinking. This right. is another one that is really well written and just fully developed characters that you really think are your friends. And when yes. you first start it, you're like, never would I. This is a town in Kansas. It's the eighth largest county in Kansas. Hey, 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 hey. hey. And I thought, I know nothing, can relate, not at all. I never want it to end. And after this, I will rewatch Ted Lasso because I'm hungry for this writing. I was over Ted Lasso. This whole last season, I could have skipped and been happy about it. Did you the finish? Enti- yeah. Entire, instead of the entire, there was one show and it was so out of place with everything else in the entire season. And it was my favorite one and it didn't fit at all. Which it one? didn't even need to oh, be there. Oh, was it the drug one? No, Amsterdam. Was that the drug one? Yeah, yeah. Where, yeah here, drink no, this I, tea and have the... the I didn't care, and, and let me say it another way. The only part, the Rebecca through line. That, the Rebecca oh, through line in Amsterdam was the only thing that held my interest. Everything else was like, I felt, they, I think they changed format. I think they got longer, and I felt each episode dragging. I was used to a faster pace. I was used to a different pace. The characters, everything, they embraced this... We're, we know, we know our own subtext now. That's how it felt to me. In the beginning, I just, I wasn't interested in this part of the arc. I would have been happy. Anyway, I did watch it all the way. It got me in the feels. I get it. But it was also like a little bit on the nose to me. So, okay, there you go. I'm a harsh critic. What can I say? That's and I want five more seasons of it. And I don't care if it's season one or, I do like how it closed, but I do like how they opened a potential door at the end of. For real. Yeah. At the end of it. I was like. Run with all of this. I'm not telling have you what you that seen, is. But. Have you seen the Amy Schumer new special that's out? She's wearing pink. I sure oh, have. She's wearing a pleated and your thoughts. Um, that's not the one you saw in person. You saw Amy Schumer a while ago. Oh, I saw her years ago. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so how about this new one? What are your thoughts on it? I enjoy her. I enjoy her honesty. I um, like where this is going. I didn't like it either. It was really flat. Was I like, enjoy her honesty. When ah! it was over, I thought... I knew everything she already said Thank because you. I've seen Thank her you. in TikToks and interviews no, and I've seen you've it all. Lived it. You've lived it. What she was doing was stating facts and observations that we all get and they weren't as clever and turn yeah. of the phrase as we're used to. And that is my exact criticism of Alex Borstein. It was the same show. I watched Amy Schumer and I had the same thought. This doesn't feel like a comedy show. This feels like a cocktail party with somebody I like a lot. And I went home. Well, that's because you have funny friends. There are people who don't and who are going to absolutely love her special. There were people who were losing their minds in that audience. And I thought, why? But that's only because I'm going to see you next week, this weekend. I'm going to see you. And I'm going to see you with some of our like funniest people. And it's going to be even funnier than that. Like, because (laughs) we are, I mean, honk, honk. That would be me. Toot, toot. I don't know what I'm doing to a horn or... Let's get back to anal. Back to life. Back to anal. Anal. I'm not sure. Oh, oh my God. Okay. This just became the anal episode. I don't know. How hey, it I love it when they're easy to name. Though. It's <laughs> I don't know so how much it better. <laughs> but I, I definitely thought when it was over, I thought, that's it. I told you. So that's anal my episode. way of kind of <laughs> agreeing with you. I think she's great. And I, her realizations, I did already know the story of of yeah. naming her son and I already knew how things went but she did have amyisms where she said oh I named his middle name after Dave Attell Attell after the best comedian out there and three people in the audience clapped and she goes yeah that's about right um yeah that's how much he's appreciated and they're like that's about right so there were parts that I left but it wasn't wildly scripted the way I usually laugh at her scripted things you know she I love the story of her going to a bachelorette, her sister's bachelorette party, and everybody's drinking wine. She's like, who'd you fuck last night? That's just more like storytelling. This one was was different, a little different. And I was surprised that it was over when it was over, thinking I didn't get enough out of it. But mm-hmm. I did enjoy every second of it. So I will give her that. She's still delightful. And she can still pick an opener like it's nobody's business. So there watch you know somebody somewhere. I'm not even finished, and I'll tell you, it's kind of delightful. They're all broken people, which brings me to, is it okay to love broken people? Well, how are they broke? (laughs) 
<laughs> you made it southern. That makes a difference. It's always funny to me. An executive creative director I worked with for five years or so, maybe longer, his name was John Brokenbrow, and he self-nicknamed himself. Broken he John. Appoint, he appointed himself Broke. And he would introduce oh himself. <laughs> and I think, as a matter of fact, Broke. if I say it, I've gotten trained now because of working with him for so long, his name is actually pronounced Brockenbro. So it's, and his, his sister is um, an author, so Martha Brockenbro. So if you ever see her stuff, and she's got like 30 books or something, Scholastic. Yes, it's that family. So anyway, so he would say, hi, I'm John Brockenbro. People call me Broke. And I'm thinking, but Why? <laughs> to your it's face. not even like you your say name. All like, like, and he invented something like broke, as in it's busted or you got nothing. Like, I don't even get anyway. So every time I hear broke, broken people, I immediately flash to his face, and he was a redhead. Like, just all of it. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> wow, Ginger's just took some shrapnel on that one. I'm just Sorry, saying. guys. <laughs> He's super, super Irishy. Very like six foot something, maybe a hundred percent pale. <laughs> freckles red hair right super super representing anyway so how are they broken that makes a difference as to how that's fair. you do love them because yes is it okay yes we love all people we love 100 percent of the people even the ones who don't deserve it but some broken people fall into that category so we have to figure out how to love with protecting yourself i'm going back one we love people you said even though they don't deserve it yep yeah. Does that come with your faith? I It's supposed to, but I think it comes with my lived experience, with my trust in karma, with my innate juju, with my hedging bets against gratitudinal justice in the universe. It just does nobody any good to put hate out there. And when people who are, who, are, who are thoroughly, purely evil, doesn't it beg the question that, if they had received more love, they might not be who they are. So is it not okay? It's way too late. No, it's way but too late But is it not that. okay for us to put a little love fictitiously out into the universe, vibrational, just to share a little, just to stop the flow of hate in all forms and all directions by simply not being part of that channel? That's all I'm talking about. I don't have any contact with people who don't deserve love because I'm very, very fortunate to have the power to have cultivated a life where I don't have ugly people and ugliness in my life. I just, I just don't. And if I start to sense some skitchiness and some scratchiness, I'm out. They fall away. They fall away because my boot is on their face, kicking them out, but they also fall away on their own. So you continue though. Is it okay to love imperfect people? How are they broken? I mean, in an array of different ways, but like uh, if we're going specifically for me, I can look at a relationship I have with family members and think, do I end this and just cut my losses and leave? Or, uh, or it's really hard. Or do I continue to take it on the chin, so to speak? What would be the Southern phrase for taking it on the chin? Or is that a Southern phrase that? <sighs> no, taking it on the chin is you're literally getting in a fist fight and someone's punching you in the face. That is taking it on the chin. And they just mean stand there and get punched. That's not very different than if, well, if God willing and the creek don't rise. Yeah, that's. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't, I think that's like a new segment on this show. I fucking <laughs> love these ridiculousisms is really what I've always wanted them to be. Like it took you 40 oh. minutes to say no. I, I told you I had trouble when my son's answer for yes was yeah, no, yeah. And his answer for no was no, yeah, no. Why are you oh, doing that to God. me? He's like, hurts uh, my brain and I love it also. But to add 700 more words and a weird picture that you just drew inside my head frustrates me, but actually captivates me for the next 20 minutes. But so, so like that, do you continue to love and accept severely broken people to the detriment of your sanity sometimes? And, and is that the line you draw? Like, does it affect your sanity? Let them go. I find it difficult to take a strong opinion on this topic, but the right answer is not one. So I'm not at the right answer yet. I know the right answer is you are in charge of you. You are entitled. Some would say required to be your best and strongest advocate. 
to put a real hard turn on this, you are born alone and you die alone. It is your responsibility to guide your life. And if there are active forces fucking up your life, it is your responsibility to steer clear of them. So I don't, I don't buy that. I don't believe that. I don't think if this active force is your auntie who you see once a year, talk to on the phone three times a year. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the answer is instead of phone calls, we go to cards now and that's it. And maybe the phone, I, I'm not available when you called me last time and I'm not ever calling you and maybe I'll send you a card. I'll do this. I'll do whatever out of whatever deference, respect, tradition, familial obligation, guilt, but protect yourself, you're saying. Ongoing trauma, whatever you call it. Yeah. If it's an extended person that's easy enough to slow down silence and you know slow walk, then yes, by all means, absolutely do that. If it's somebody in your inner circle, if it's somebody that's actively hurting you all the time, if it's your fucking mom, I mean, then that's a, that's a tricky conversation. So then you start to get the other uh, variable factors in there. Okay, how much longer is the lifespan of this relationship. I mean, I told you, my husband always says to the kids, go hug Nana. This is probably the last time you're ever going to so see her. Uh, she so can hear awful. you. She's right fucking there. Nana's like, fuck <laughs> off, Stuart. Yes. Well, in the beginning, <laughs> the last the last two of the seven years that he Nana's said that to them. Nana's 38. Yeah, right? Watch out, kid. Nana's 38. <laughs> <laughs> because mama's going to put a pillow over her face. You That's really why you have to sad. worry. Yeah. No, if the, if the lifespan is... You know, we're looking at a, a five to 15 year window. That's what we're looking that's at. A, that's a pretty decent swing. So is this a slow walk? The other thing to think about is you have to understand yourself. I've, I'm not going to do the whole big long story because I've told it four or five times on this show, but we'll condense it to the airline version. Put the mask on yourself before assisting others. Okay. Right. So the reality is here's the mask on yourself in this case. You know how you will respond for the rest of your long life, not five to 15 years, the rest of your long life and the memory of how you handled this situation. So when until, so until and unless you are okay with your actions, why create the guilt? Deal with the bullshit for another short period of time and then you can go out head held high and say, I did all I could. I left it all in the field. I did it all that I needed to do. I behaved in the way that's to my highest ideal and standard. Okay. You know, that person was the problem. It wasn't me. That's one way to well, handle it. Well, that's the pocket right there. I I did. I lived to my standard of, okay. I, I wanted because, to get out of jail free card from you. It's what I was looking for. Like, well, oh, fuck that. Of, you deserve get better. get out of jail free card is burn that bridge to the ground. Right, right. Never look <laughs> over that way again. Have fun and party on your side of the bridge, but only if you can throw a party guilt free. If you can't throw your own guilt-free party... You're punishing yourself. Then you don't get... And maybe you can. Maybe you're like, I'm done with this. Here come the flamethrower. Fuck off. Woo! I am at that party. I will bring the champagne. Absolutely. That is a get-out-of-jail-free card. But you are the jailer. Right. So if you already know that you'll wake up in two weeks feeling like shit, if you'll look back at the future, future funeral... If you look back at the future funeral wheel and you're up there at the podium because somebody decides to ask you to speak, they don't hate you that much, and you get up there and go, yeah, I said peace out to that bitch six years ago and I never looked back. Boom. Drop the mic. Walk out the store. No, first you called. yelled, drinks on me. And then you drop the mic. <laughs> Any of we're, you? At the, we're at the funeral store. <laughs> caskets for everybody. I would love to say jokes on you. I'm putting you in that plain pine box oh. that you bury in, but they've already taken care of all of their afterlife things. Somebody this I know. All, go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was I was switching gears. Somebody I know who's trying to avoid dying mocked the fuck out of me for even mentioning a new trend in. I don't know. So I don't like where this is going. Oh, I don't, don't like you? Because you I don't know, like know. Where this is going. a new trend like, in wellness, like... a new trend in supplements, a new trend in friend. self-care. I thought you were my friend. I brought to you two weeks ago now the idea of let's get back to anal cow oh, colostrum in the powder form coming out, and a dear friend of ours was trying oh. it. And you said, "No, no, no, she's not. No, she's not." I said, "Yes, because what you get in colostrum." 
is all of the nutrients and all of, and as I'm saying this to a girlfriend of mine, or she had heard the podcast, she said, yeah, all you need if you're a baby fucking calf. Thank you. Not as a human. So I thought, oh my God, you just took Amy's side. Dear listener, I then opened TikTok. Oh, fuck you, everybody. Scroll, scroll. Oh, I know that voice. That's my Amy on TikTok. Um, What could she possibly be cooking up this time? <sighs> By the way, I saw two TikTok videos from you. One, you will be making at the beach next weekend with limes, lemons, oh, yes. and fucking joy. Brazilian limeade. And they turn it into either a mojito or a margarita. So, and the trick with the Brazilian lemonade limeade. You're not getting out of this. Fuck you. Fuck it. I had her. I had her. You never had her on the pivot. I get her on the food pivots every time, guys. She does get me on the food pivots. But I will tell you, she'll tell you about that fucking limeade in a second. Yeah, I am always distracted by anal. (laughs) Anal and drugs always (laughs) distract me. (laughs) But I am on a path right now to the point where there's a vein bulging out of my forehead that I can't even look at anymore. To tell you, dear listener, the first was the limeade, and that's fly as fuck. So go to her TikTok immediately. Your TikTok is under my wife has a knife. Probably. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. It is yeah. great. So go see this limeade. There's tequila involved. That's all you need to know. Or vodka? What's involved? Doesn't matter. The second one, as I swipe Boop. up, has our sweet, critical, cynical <sighs> Amy opening up what looks like a fun dip packet Shit. of powder that I had just a week earlier discussed with her. And she said, no, 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 I no. I jumped on the tit. It's true. Let's hear it. I'm on the colostrum bag. I fucking did it. I did it. And? It's too early to tell. Okay, here's but. What ha- well, here's what happened. First of all, when you say colostrum, you immediately you recognize the source is bovine colostrum. You just don't ever stop the visual of sucking on a cow's tit. Correct. A teat, as if it were. you will. Yeah. A, a yellowy, milky, super snot, viscous. It's gross. Well, Try here's what the, that out. Here's what the colostrum Shave it down. actually. Here's what the colostrum <laughs> actually is. It's just powder granules. That's it. I broke down. I ordered these fuckers. I don't even know why I did. I think it's the the litany now of promised benefits is laughably long. It is so snake oil ridiculous. <laughs> you sort of just give up and think, well, if it's supposed to do all this shit, it's got to do something. If it's supposed to do what, come out and simonize your tires. It's going to do everything. I'll pay your mortgage. does every fucking thing that <laughs> it, it does could possibly have a do. Lot of benefits. Right? It's yeah. nonsensically long. And I thought, well, I got about nine of them fucking things, so if you chip away at half, what's the fuck? Let's go. So I got them. They come in individual packets, meant like you would drop an entire packet powder style into a 16-ounce yeah. bottle of water. Shake it up, drink it. Then they had some people dry chugging this shit, where they just... Take a little scooper, a tiny scooper, and go poop and pop it right in their mouth, and then they're ready to go, which I already know from my dry powder days. That's the preferred method because I don't like having to chug down, glug down, all this weird chalky business. It doesn't ever blah, blah, blah. So I thought I'm going to do it. So I go on TikTok, and I take the little packet, and I shake up that packet, and I rip off the top of the what packet. What flavor did you get? I got vine watermelon. Uh, that's not available for me where it's I new. am. Okay, because mine was it's blood new. orange, and dear listener, I still have not tried it yet. I have what? three other supplements. I still have not tried it yet. I'm going to tell you that you almost talked me out of it, and then somehow I talked you into it, or just at, like... They also, and they hit me with a 30% off coupon and all this crazy business, which is who cares, but uh, here's how, I think it's technically watermelon vine. It is so tangy and so sharp. It's almost inedible. It's crazy because I pour it directly into my mouth instead of diluting it, and I should do that. And have when you, you pour been doing it directly this into your mouth? Day? It burns. I've been doing this every day, so I'm on day four, maybe. And what? And I still find, I by day three, I think this is the TikTok video. I pour it directly. Did I put this one out there? I just Where saw I you put, put it, it in into glass. your mouth, and you went, "It's burning." It's like I filmed another evil one, and I have fun dip. <laughs> I put it is awful. So I filmed a second one and I haven't obviously edited that and put it out there. The second one, I thought, I know how I can make this better. So I put it in a very large, oversized goblet style glass, a stem glass. Shocking. I put in some special ice, 
watermelon cubes. Shocking. A Ooh. splash of pomegranate water, a splash of actual pomegranate juice, and then I cut it instead with regular water with um, uh, black cherry sparkling water, which is clear. So the whole thing in Just combination. Just as they serve it to newborn calves. Just as they serve it to newborn calves. <laughs> and when you mix it up that way. It's delicious, and it just tastes like a wonderful sparkling drink. And the little watermelon cubes are nice, and it doesn't get clumpy, and it's great. But, yeah, every other day I've just been tossing this shit right in the back of my tongue. But it's it's got – at least my flavor way has citric acid in it, and I think it's too strong. The unflavored you can probably just chug in the way I was doing it, but the citric one is too hard. It's too, it's too hard on my body, so I have to mix it with other things. Anyway, I've been doing it. I haven't noticed – any change, I haven't noticed any benefit. In any all. of your nine possible fields? It is of- supposed to affect so many goddamn things. It's supposed to affect your gut health. It's supposed to cure leaky gut. It's supposed to thicken up your hair. It's supposed to fix your skin. Your hair Take looks pretty thick right now. Acne. No, get rid of wrinkles. It's supposed to change your metabolism. It's supposed to... Um, help with menopause symptoms. Help with anxiety. If you're a it's calf. supposed to don't make your brown eyes blue. It's gonna do all the fucking things. I don't, don't fucking know. Don't make your so, brown eyes. Was that Kim Carnes? Who is that? I couldn't even tell you. So I'm just gonna keep up, keep it up, because it's also it's one I can do. It's easy enough right. that I can just do this and hopefully. But I swear to God, this whole morning routine thing. It's getting longer. When. <laughs> when did the mornings become the only time of day that you can have to do every fucking thing? You have to, the, the second you get out of bed, you have to have 30 grams of protein within 30 minutes of rising. You have to put your feet directly on the earth Wait, with no what? shoes on. Wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. 30, 30 grams, grams of protein within 30, within 30 minutes, 30 of, minutes rising? of rising. No coffee. Yeah. Not for the first 90 minutes. You don't get any coffee for 90 minutes. It's got to be water only or water with them. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You know that Fairlife makes that chocolate milk that I put in my other 70 supplements at night before bed. I, yes, I, I yes, um. That is 30 grams of protein, but it's also all these other things. Is Does right. that not count? Do I have to eat a fucking chicken no, breast? No, you can drink it. You can drink. And that's that's what I've been dealing with and drinking that. But I, I sort of don't love starting every day with a shake that I buy. But yeah, I, the, in order, my protein is so deficient and has been so deficient for so many years. I just have to get into the habit of eating protein, craving protein, 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 protein. It's not, it used to be not unusual for me to go an entire week with no protein. Like I just don't even think about wow. it. Wow. What? Yeah. Your body doesn't like scream for it? No, because it'd be like saying I go an entire week without water, but meanwhile I'm eating watermelon and oranges or yeah, waters you know, and all of drinking that. soda or whatever. That's what I'm saying. So I don't actively go out of my way to eat protein, but there's protein in vegetables. There's protein in everything, little tiny trace amounts. So if you're eating things, it's just I would have I would have normally self selected an entire week where I would eat like a salad. And I wouldn't worry about putting a protein on it. And now I'm like, oh, this has contributed to a lot of my fucking problems because I'm super deficient, which is why I have to do like basically 100 grams of protein every fucking day. Holy shit. And if you hadn't, yeah, if you hadn't counted it up, that's a fucking lot. Holy shit. Yeah, it's a lot. So I'm now I'm, it it squeezes out room and space for anything else. As they say, I chihuahua. No, nobody says that. We do say I chihuahua. Bingo. Other than what's her name from Charo. She's the only one I know that says, I Chihuahua. Good old Charo. All right. So here's my big question of the day. I know you thought it was anal, anal. Uh, here's my question of the day. It's more like a command. Of the week. Question. Anal, anal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is mm-hmm. a command. Don't do it. So, or give blood. So your birthday. Yes, ma'am. Is in the month of July. Yes, still. Continue. Yes. What... How are you? I have all of the questions and I'm trying to figure out how to come at it. I know somebody who takes off of work for their birthday. Holy shit. I know somebody who celebrates their birthday for a week. I know (laughs) somebody who celebrates the month of July in which my birthday resides. That is it's the phrase. It's my birthday month has come out of her mouth. Yes. Um, what the fuck? I don't. I did that one time. <laughs> I, I wasn't did that. even talking about you. I did that. No, I, I don't think you are. Okay. I did that one time. 
I did it one time for my big five O, and I had a birthday month, and it was really more like like a it was almost the ninety day period. It was a it was super excellent, and then we're back to this just your regular fucking life. I don't care about birthdays. You were here last week. What's so big about this week? I mean, honestly. But yes, some people take this real far. And they get so affronted. I'm, I, it's, I guess I'm in the wrong. They get so I'll be the judge of that. Go that ahead. That you don't, like, care. ask <laughs> them what they want. And, yeah, care. Send them cards in advance. Like, actual cards with your handwriting on it. Want? And a stamp. Wait, that you don't, don't ask them what they want? fucking cards. Want? Yeah. 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 Okay. Like, oh. That's or they're, like, surprised. You know, I'm like... At what point did you become an adult? And the rest of us don't give a fuck about these. Th- is that a childhood thing? Unless you're 90. Right. It is. Right. And every year is like, a, ah, they said I wouldn't make it. Unless it's one of those. Thank you. This is my chemotherapy birthday. You got it, baby. We are celebrating. I will Let's ring that bell with you. Yes. Yes. Come on. But I would never think to take my birthday off of work. My birthday's always been in the summer, so it's not really an issue. That's part of it. And also, does your job suck? Like, maybe oh, that, right. that's what I'm getting at. I don't know. Does it? Birthday week, birthday month. Dude, I'm going. This is my public service announcement for today. Nobody gives a fuck <laughs> about your goddamn birthday. We don't birthday. love you enough. <laughs> I. Nobody gives a fuck. The people in my life, I celebrate them every time I see them. Our friend Janine, right. your childhood bestie, was just visiting yes. a, a family member Woo! up here. And every time I see her, it's a fucking national holiday. And I'm so Amen. happy and I will celebrate the fuck out of you. It's your birthday. That sounds like that's kind of a sitch that you have with your parents. I, yeah, that's I kind feel of like a, birthdays are an excuse if you haven't seen anybody in a couple of months, that's when you can pull out, guess what? It's my birthday. That's like the same as saying, guess what? It's Thursday. Yay! Then I guess we need to ding, ding, dong. Or dong, if dong, dong, it's dong, a dong, big dong, one, dong. like your 50th. Or yeah. once you that's get to important. 75 and you do every five years after that, once you hit, I don't know, 80, you can have one every year. Like, oh my God, you're still here with the with the anger and history that you have. It's a fucking miracle. So celebrate that all you want. Again, nobody else gives a fuck about your birthday. I, I can't be clearer. There are, however, people in my life I love to celebrate weekly if I can. So <laughs> know who your people are. Know who celebrates you regularly. And please, public service announcement. Nobody gives a shit. It's your goddamn birthday. Grow the fuck up. I think it's a parental failure. Don't you? Do you think parents well, made a big deal? This is your birthday. Like, where do you I, get that psychology? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, it's just a generational, it might be a generational thing. What generation? The younger than us and beyond and older than us in this way. A generational thing in terms of if you're a lot older than us, let's get back to anal. The older ones sometimes are celebrating because they had a whole life where nobody gave a shit about them, period. Oh, that's like, interesting. You don't get dinner. Like, you don't, you know, you don't need clothes. All the things, like, the they had a very different, right. a very different life. So they can have a fucking birthday every year. And they can declare it birthday year. And especially when you're getting older, because you're also, how many more of these do I get? So that one I can, I can sort of allow regardless. The younger folks, if you're not at a milestone birthday and you're over, we'll say, will be arbitrary if you're over 30 oh I would have said 25 go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna give you to 30 okay. because yeah I'll give you to 30 if you are 31 like you're past age 30 yes 31 you're the now perfect age. you're in milestone territory and 35 almost doesn't count right I agree. you get it sort of counts because it used to be when you switch into a new demographic on those lists of what's your age bracket. Those change And they do it like too. 18 to 35 or sometimes it's like 18 to 40. It's usually you're like every 10 years you get one. And that's kind of it. Right. And then the rest of the time, it's just a regular Saturday night. I mean, it's kind of like New Year's Eve. We all know what happens tomorrow. Who fucking cares? But you don't celebrate a month of New Year's Eve and a week of New Year's Eve. Knock it the fuck off. It is not 
fun for anyone. And I will promise you, if I see you celebrating, I'll make sure it's not fun for you either. As my wow. mother would say, I'll give you something to cry about. You stop crying Happy right now. Happy birthday. Yeah. Okay. At my birthday party. She's such a good friend. Melissa, yeah, if you do so not stop mean. crying, I will give you something to cry about. My point being where I was <laughs> headed with this is from a generational standpoint, yeah. I don't know that it fits in. I don't think it fits in with the whole helicopter parent. But there was this kind of massive swing from... I don't even know if we have kids, which is kind of how we were raised to I'm yes. involved in every aspect of my child's life. And in some cases to my child's life is my life. Like so birthdays became mini weddings and bat mitzvahs. And it's just it really turned into a giant show. And I am way too cheap and disinterested. And the kids would even ask. I've never thrown a cavalcade birthday party for any of my children ever for any year Ever. Never, never, never. And I would say, it's our tradition to do a family party. And they would look at me like, why? And I would say, because that's what we do. Because that's we who have loves a, you and gives a shit that you're still here We have a family party. Yeah. That includes a family dinner, which is anything that you want, custom made for you. Cookie all puss the, cake all the, from Carvel. Everything or handmade by me for weeks at a fucking time. Whatever Carvel. you want. Just Ask for the gift. You get it. Scream. But I'm not calling the whole neighborhood and having everybody come over and give you the same $18 gift that you don't even want. I mean, and renting out some sickening pizza place and having everybody have a stroke coma for two years. Ugh, I didn't even like going to those fucking things. So, yeah. So we never did it. And maybe all those parents who did do that for their kids, those kids think that's what a birthday is. Because a birthday was a really big celebration with 60 kids from your class coming and four hours of rollerblading or jumping on the, you know, neighborhood clown or whatever the fucking trampoline house is. I don't know. I do love a good bouncy house. Um, I feel like the milestones are worth celebrating, especially yes. if you've been through it, especially if you've had a health scare, especially if you've had something that was limiting or traumatizing or – but. For example, my 50th last summer was the best birthday ever imaginable. Let me bring together your most beloved and let's just worry about nothing. Just let the yeah. day happen, um, which is very rapey. But it was the most <laughs> incredible. Just yes. Great. After that, from 50 to probably 65, when you put a marker on that of a are we retired? I mean, I've been retired for the last 25 years, but are we both retired now? Like when we get to that, then we can talk again. So I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with the whole month of my birthday and parental failure that led them there. And you were frustrated this week. Hold on to your pants. You went to DMV this week. I feel like it's hit or miss there. <sighs> well, we have been putting it off. What are our we getting? Youngest, our real IDs? What What's the... Our youngest is uh -oh. eligible for a learner permit. Clear the, the only thing standing, <laughs> The only thing standing in his way was physically taking the test, the, the computerized test right. at DMV. He had accomplished everything else. And he is an accomplishment-focused human and wanted Thank to God. make sure two things were true. He wanted to make sure that he got the permit as quickly as possible and he wanted to make sure that he passed the test so every time that we would coordinate with our schedules getting it as quickly as possible he would say well I can't go today because I'm not prepared for this test so it was it was kind of kept moving and get moving and then it got to a last minute situation so we said we're doing it today we're pulling off the band-aid we're going without an appointment we're just going to make it happen because if we don't do this it's going to set us back with our schedule it's going to set us back a whole month so on a lark, we drove over there on a Monday afternoon, which you would think would be the busiest. DMV worst, DMV right. worst. We got there at 1.15 p.m., no appointment, walked in, didn't have time to sit down. Oh, my God. Because they called our number so quickly. And I thought, well, if we're here, I will finally do my real ID. So they moved so quickly that we had simultaneous appointments. And I said, are you okay doing this by yourself? And he said, yep. So he went in one direction and I went in the other. And his appointment went great. He passed the test flying. He got, actually got 100 on the test, of course. Did everything he needed to do. Got a beautiful photo. Got it all done. And I went to the stereotypical quintessential DMV representative. 
the man looked like he comes out of his cave twice a day he lives there. to go to this job that he hates. And he was angry and grumpy and disinterested, barely would answer any questions I had. So he took, he said, look here. And so I did. And then all of a sudden my photo was taken. And I said, oh, was that the photo? Didn't answer. One minute, came back, was done. Didn't give me, normally they say, would you like to see the photo? Because they've done this. I've known this because yeah, of my all kids. The time, yeah. I have, well, I, who remembers what happens at DMV? But with recent memory, the three kids have all been asked, do you want to see the photo? Here it is. Take do a look. Do you want to And my kids, right. my kids are so shy. They're like, that's great. And she's like, are you sure? It's okay. And then one of them asked for a retake. And so it's like at that point. So it's, they're very accommodating. They're super kind not there. Not this guy. Not, not this man. And so when it was all done, I said, oh, I don't like that photo. And he's like, here you go. Not, I'll take it again. And I didn't make a case out of it because I was focused on getting over to the other side of the building, the, the other side of the same same room that we're in, but two lines away to make sure he was, a con- I was there for him. My idea, idea was irrelevant. And honestly, so I took it and I walked over and I showed the other attendant and I said, look how fast he did it. And she went, oh, and I said, and look at the worst photo I've ever had in my life. She looked down and she went, yeah, that bad. That's bad. And she said, did he? And then she closed her mouth. And I said, no, he sure didn't ask me if I'd wanted to retake. And she said, well, and I said, and I, I didn't ask. And she kind of decided. I saw her deciding in silence. Am I going to say this shit to this white lady? Nope. I'm going to let her go. And she just did the, mm -hmm, and did one of these. And I said, I said, it's okay. Must have been Frank that did that. I said, Frank never gives you a shit. I said, it's, it's all right. It's we're I'll take it. And I just kind of laughed and she's like, all right, I'll break a book, a book, going to do my job today. So this happened. And as I left, so it's the worst photo I've ever had taken in my entire life. It is laughably bad. It is ridiculously bad. And here's the thing. I almost am now. I thought I was going to use it as a badge of honor because I'm, I'm a fortunate person. I take a better photo than I look in real life. I take pretty good photos. People, people you see take me in real life photos. and they're like, you're okay. And then you look at the photo and you're like, damn, that's a good photo. So my photos look better than I look. I usually do okay in a photo. That's just a fact. This photo is the opposite. <laughs> I look so much worse in this photo than I actually look that it's really bad. And I thought, you know what, universe? Message received. You trying to remind me Shit your ass down. You deserve it. Not everything going to be shiny, happy people. Fortunately, nobody's doing that stuff in my house. All these photos sometime, you don't deserve a good photo every time. Think about it. Think about all those people who never have a good photo. So here you go. And I thought, you know what? That for the next 10 years will be my reminder. And then, just as an aside, I'm going to tell you, we happened to lease a car for the youngest one because he's driving now. And I had to provide my license Ugh. to do this and I failed to do it I fraudulently submitted my old license for the picture instead of instead of the new one because I couldn't stand sending the real license and so if that's how it's going to be for 10 years I don't think you're going to last 10 years because you need that picture for other things for example I have a weed card and <laughs> when you register with the state, they use your picture. From, you got to look good when you're getting weed. Well, they use your picture from DMV, from your license. And they issue oh, you your God. license. Your weed card is your driver's license, but it says patient across the top. It's all of your information from DMV. So that picture no. is what people use in other legal aspects for your identification. It's There is not a single redeeming factor. It. It, there is, I, my face fills the entire, floods the frame. It's like I don't even have any hair. It was cropped so tight. You missed my best features. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. So now, and I even asked the woman in the other side, who, the one who was conspiring yeah. with me and recognizing how bad it is. I said, is there any way we could do this again? She said, no, you, you done now. And I was like, oh okay. my God. I, if you so, done for now. <laughs> you done, you done now. So I'm going to go, I guess I have to just buy a new license. I don't even know if they'll allow me to buy a new license just for the photo. They probably won't. They probably won't. I'm or they'll confident. be generous and say, if you want to pay the $40, you can do it again. And I will happily pay $40 and I will stand there until they get it right. Well, don't go. That's how vain I am. A- I'm vain. I'm vain. I'm vain. I'm vain. I think one is. of the best pictures, my, my daughter's never happy with a picture of herself. It's women. Women aren't very 
thrilled with. And when you see one you like, you're like, could you put that on my license? Could you put but that you on my license? But you know what? And here, so I thought that's what this was. Yeah. I thought the universe was giving me a wider range of photos from which to choose. And the reality is no. Every woman, I guess men too, Every woman, if we're talking about women, right? Yeah. You have a range of acceptable pictures. You know your photo sweet spot. They're, 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 they range from pretty good to ooh, I like. That's the majority of your photos. And then you have some where you're like, delete, that's a delete, good, delete. I like it. That's oh, a good one. Okay. And then you're somewhere like, no one can ever see this. Must destroy, kill, destroy, right? destroy. Yes. So this was so out, outside any of those ranges, it's shocking. If it was in the range... I would not even really care, honestly. So there Um, it is. Mallory's picture she took was from when she and my son staffed the Taylor Swift concert two nights ago. How was that? The idea is sitting on the table, and I'm like, look at this gorgeous, flowy hair. She's like, I know. And it's for an ID for one night of being security. One of my my best photos of my entire life was college ID. I held on. I think I still have it in here. I held on to that shit forever. And it's like, God, nobody gets to see it now. It was great. It was notably great. <laughs> Better than a wedding photo. That way too. Yeah. Kupferman says that about her her college ID. She's like, look they at did that something right. hair. Look at all the healthy, appealing glow. I'm like, I, I don't know. I, I look like an athlete. I was ready to go. People used to call me Katarina Vitt. You remember her? I do. Yeah, that, yeah. I look good in that picture. It was a lie. So they got photos made for oh, Taylor were, Swift and tell me about the show. And oh, my God, I got it gone. They had IDs. It was just a very long day. You know, you're getting up at six in the morning and you drive for four hours to get where you're going. You eat something. You can't park near a venue when Taylor Swift is in town. So you park a mile away and walk there and you're exhausted already. So from like two o'clock in the afternoon until two o'clock in the morning, they wow. were standing and they were ushering people and learning and then showing. And it was very, I said, do you still have your ear, ear plugs? And my daughter looked me deadpan and said, they didn't give me any. She was seven inches from a speaker in, it's not Heinz Stadium anymore. It's a very stupid fucking name that I won't learn. So it'll always be Heinz Stadium. Three River that Stadium, works. whatever it is. We know. We know. Um, you yeah. have ketchup bottles everywhere, my girlfriend just told me. So, yeah, you're still Heinz Stadium. So Idiot. I think she might be going deaf now because of this concert. But Worth it. the show I heard was Amaze Balls. It was um, not the opener she had hoped for. Phoebe Bridgers, who's dating Bo Burnham. She was hoping to meet... Bo Burna. She had hopes. You can't use phones because you're security. How did you even get this gig as secu- How did you even get this for them? Oh, I didn't. I had know? nothing to do with it. It's my son. He goes to the University of Pittsburgh, and his fraternity has oh. been known to help out at the stadium with events that they have. And when they need thousands of bodies, many bodies, right? they sure, just need sure. tons of people to keep you behind a barricade, to check your bag, to stand outside, it's a great to stand pipeline. inside. I love so it. Okay. They did not get paid for it, but his fraternity gets paid for it, right? So Do you know, I thought this whole time, I thought what? that you and Dr. Stewart yeah. bought them tickets to this show and you were being coy on air because you didn't want to say that you had spent, I don't know, $2,500 for tickets to send your kids to this show. I really thought that's what was happening yeah. and that this whole thing about them working it was some bullshit. No, Because I was no. like, who fucking works a show? That's crap. She's lying. But I was like, let her lie. I love uh, her. Ha, ha, let her lie. Don't call her on her bullshit. She's swimming I in it. I really thought it was. No. I thought, I don't know why she's being weird about just saying I bought them tickets. No. But they, anyway. They worked it out themselves. They made plans. They drove there. The All only right. thing I did do was... Uh, rent that hotel so they didn't have to drive sure. home at 2 Smart. 30 in the morning as you should so they Very stayed good. 30 minutes outside of venue and then came home the next day for father's day when their dad was very busy working a 12 hour shift <laughs> for all those other fathers who had fuckers you everywhere know, blew up the corn on the grill dear listener anal <laughs> <laughs> did i pause too long after that did was that Never. a question i don't know never it's a command. We are yep. so grateful that you turned us on today and <laughs> as many days as it took you to hear this podcast because you couldn't get through it all in one sitting. I, You've turned us on. Well, I hope we turned you on too in some way. And I also hope that it wasn't through anal. So give blood. Answer the questions. Is every day your birthday? 
I really and smile for that photo. I do you know? want to know and ask for fucking retake before it gets out of hand and out of control. You guys, it's so bad. It's so super bad. I guess something's got to be done. You know, I have to see it. I don't know if all of Brillab's squad needs to see it. Oh, oh they have to see it. I my shame is going to be known far and wide. Yes, anybody wants to see it. Um, <laughs> first of all, get in touch with us, Brilliant Observations at Gmail dot com. Go to Facebook at Brilliant Observations. Join Brillab Squad so you can see two pictures from Amy. One, the college ID where she looks fucking awesome. And two, uh, once she blacks out all of her other information on there and just shows you the face, the picture, that one too will be there. Listen Brilliant on Instagram and Twitter. Check us out, will ya? Will ya? You're here. You might as well. Check, check, check it out.